Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Wednesday evening of music here at From the Top. We're doing these every other week now. Uh, so great to have all of you with us. I'm your host, Peter Dugan, and it's fall. So I have, you know, my flannels on. Uh, we're going for the cozy vibe tonight. And uh, fall means new shows at From the Top. And we've just put out our first brand new show of the fall season. If you listened on NPR this uh, past weekend, you've already met the two amazing young musicians who we're featuring tonight. Uh, if you haven't listened to that show yet, be sure to check out fromthetop.org or go to wherever you get your podcasts. Um, this show was actually hosted by one of our recurring guest hosts, Orly Shaham, uh, amazing pianist. And uh, yeah, so you'll get to meet these uh, wonderful young musicians there and tonight in person over, well, it feels like in person. It's the new, the new normal now. Uh, but they're coming to us from two different parts of the country. We have Nadira Navruzov coming from downtown Manhattan, um, not far from where I am right now, and Esme Arias Kim, who's coming to us from the Chicago area, to be more specific, Hoffman Estates. Um, Esme is a violinist. She's going to be performing for us first. But before that, uh, I just want to mention uh, our partners who are so pleased to be working with tonight on this uh, very special premiere concert event. First of all, the Kaufman Center right up here on the Upper West Side. That's where this show was recorded. Um, that, you, that you've just heard and that featured these two young artists. And also uh, the Sphinx Organization, a national organization committed to transforming lives through the power of diversity in the arts. Each year, the winner of the Sphinx Junior Division competition appears on our show, and we're very thankful for all the amazing work that Sphinx does. And tonight you're meeting a first place winner of the Sphinx in Esme Arias Kim. So, um, Get into the chat section. Let us know where you're watching from and how you're enjoying the program. And uh, without any further ado, let's bring on Esme. She's going to start things off with some Saint-Saëns. Thank you. 
just beautiful. That was Esme Arias Kim. Esme, it's so nice to be meeting you. Um, you were just on this show that aired, but of course, I uh, was with with one of our recurring guest hosts, so I didn't get a chance to meet you until right now. Um, so awesome to hear you play. That was just exquisite. Tell everyone what, what we just heard. So that was the Havanese by Sinsans, and it's one of my favorite pieces, actually. I actually chose this piece to play um, during quarantine because I just love how expressive and beautiful it is. Well, that certainly came across uh, just wonderful. So we're going to bring out now someone uh, else who is on your show. Uh, but from what I understand, you two have only met once. So let's bring on Nadira Navruzov from New York. There she is. And um, Nadira, so nice to meet you too. So so you two were on the same show. Now, normally, um, whenever we tape a show from the top, everyone comes together. We spend uh, several days uh, really getting to know one another. So Tell me a little bit about what your experiences were like uh, recording this rather unusual show. Um, Esme, why don't you uh, get us started? Yeah, so it was, I, I recorded it at Piano Forte Studios, which is in downtown Chicago. And it was actually one of the first times that I was getting in the car for like a musical um, event. So it was really exciting. And Although it wasn't, I wasn't playing in front of an audience, it sort of, I felt that sort of performing aspect and that was really exciting because during the pandemic there hasn't been any performances. So it really gave me a lot of motivation to keep practicing and the interview was so wonderful. It was wonderful getting to know Orly and talking to her and so the overall experience was just really inspiring. Nice. How about you, Nadira? I mean, you actually met with Orly in a studio at, at Kaufman Center in New York, right? Yes, yes. Um, it was, yeah, so it was at Kaufman, um, which is actually incidentally where I went to elementary and middle school. Um, oh, so it's like going home. Much. home. Yes, exactly. So it was like, I, so I went to school there for nine years and I hadn't really been back much since I left middle school, which was many years ago. Um, and so just even being in that space was just like kind of like strange and, and familiar and unfamiliar all at once. Right. Um, right. But the whole experience was, I mean, as, as Mary was saying, it was just incredible. It was the first time that I had uh, collaborated with another musician since March 1st. Mm. Um, and, like, I didn't realize before how much, how energizing it is to just, like, play music with other people um, until after we had the, like, first rehearsal um, and then after the show. And I was just, like, I was just, like, reeling with energy for, for like, a week afterwards just because it was just so much fun to just to play music with someone else. And Orly has a, like, you know, incredible energy uh, when she plays. Yeah. And so um, just that whole experience was so, so refreshing and energizing for me. Awesome. I mean, I, yeah, I actually went to the Kaufman Center. I missed you by like a couple hours because I, then I went and recorded with someone for another show. And I had the same feeling like this um, gives, yeah, this, we have, we're good. We're approaching this music with more energy than ever now because we've realized just how much we missed it and uh, and just how how much we thrive off of collaboration and, and communication and love hearing that from both of you. Um, Esme, we have to take a quick second to congratulate you on your Sphinx win. Uh, con huge congrats. That's that's such a, a great accomplishment. Talk a little bit about what that experience was like for you. Yeah, it was like one of the best experiences I've ever um, had in my musical life. It's not only just a competition, it's really just a community of people that really are promoting and um, working towards more diversity in the arts. And I really love that message a lot. And it was my dream to play in that hall, the Detroit Symphony Hall. And so that was absolutely amazing. I met so many wonderful people, not just musicians, but people who have worn different hats in their lifetime and have done so many amazing things. And just getting to know more people and reconnecting with old friends was just so much fun. Great. Well, huge congrats. And I know that there are some folks joining us tonight from the Sphinx organization. And uh, so welcome to all of you. And, and thank you for everything you do. Such a such important and necessary work um, now more than ever. So so thank you. And now let's get into some more music. Nadira, you've got a flute there, I assume. I do. <laughs> all right. What do you what have you got for us? Um, so the first piece I'm going to play is uh, Image by a French um, 20th century composer named Eugene Boza. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and it's a great piece, very much like telling a story, I think. So. Beautiful. Can't wait. Brava, brava. Just beautiful. What an what an epic journey that you just took us on. Um, you you talked about the sort of narrative 
element of this. And I could hear the storytelling, even though I don't know that piece, um, I could hear like the, these, these echoing calls and responses and, and, uh, uh, just just so exciting. And uh, tell everyone again, um, just in case they're just tuning in, what, what we just heard. Uh, that's Image by Eugene Botza. Amazing. Um, Botza is a French composer, but with an Italian name. Uh, um, so the reason why I mention that is because later on we're going to come back to great Italian names in a, in a different way. So stay tuned for more shenanigans with Italian names. Um, so that was Nadira Navruzov. She's joining us um, from New York. And we have Esme Arias Kim joining us from the Chicago area. Both of these young musicians were just featured on our radio program just this this past weekend. So let's, let's bring out uh, Esme Arias Kim, who was with us at the start of the program. She was on the same show as you. And there she is. Welcome back, Esme. And um, I'm going to take a back seat now and let you two ask uh, a question of one another. So let's start by having um, Nadira, why don't you ask Esme a question? Sure. Well, I mean, I was wondering, um, because you are, you're 14 years old, 15 years old, 14? Um, almost 15. Almost 15, right. But you just like won this super exciting competition. Um, and it's, and when you perform, you know, as I've heard you play a couple times, you know, rehearsal in here, um, you're just so like, you know, you're confident, you have amazing presence and, and, you know, even through this, this sort of zoom screen. Um, so I was just wondering, you know, do you have any sort of pre-competition or pre-concert like rituals or anything, or do you just go on and do it? Um, like what's your kind of, what's your, what's your, I don't know, your, bef your backstage, um, I guess, ritual. Do you have one? Yeah. First of all, thank you so much. That means so much to me. Um, Rituals? Not really. I just warm up before. Like I like to go through the whole piece and cross all the T's, dot all the I's. And I eat bananas before. I don't know if that's like a scientific thing, but it just like makes me feel better. So I do that. I do always have like a sweatshirt. So um, I have like my lucky sweatshirt that I always wear before. So that helps me. In terms of like I don't know, priming myself to get up on stage and to um, be present while I'm performing. I just try to think of how fun it's going to be and how much I'm going to enjoy it. So that's it. Yeah. I love that. Focusing on enjoying the moment. And uh, sometimes it's like once you're actually on the stage, you realize, oh, this I'm into it. But it's really hard to put your mind in that place before you go out there, you know, um, that's great. That's good advice for any young musician watching. Um, so Esme, now you ask a question of Nadira. Okay. Um, since you really like reading, I want to know what your favorite genre is and why. My favorite genre. Okay, I've always been partial to fiction, and I've definitely been trying to like branch out and read, you know, more like biographies and things. But I've always, I'm, I'm a sucker for a good, like a compelling story. Um, and so I've got to say, like, you know, 80, 90 percent of the books that I've read in my life have been like just like just a really good story. And that's not even necessarily like it doesn't have to be fantasy or anything, but something that's just made up, something that, you know, I can really kind of get lost in it in, in somebody else's story for a while. And I, I really think that, like, I mean, I'm a big believer in like things being interdisciplinary. And so I really believe that characters from books have informed the way that I play certain phrases like I've definitely been playing something and sort of been like you know that remind like this phrase reminds me of like this person like just this phrase but like even little things like that I think just reading a story about a made-up person like it there's sort of no replacement for that and and I think that I don't know it just sort of affects the way that I that I do everything else creatively great great question great answer and you know I would just add that Nadira, you're absolutely right that there is a crossover there between literary uh, characters uh, and musical tropes, um, and that that goes all the way back in time. Um, and you you encounter that with, um, I mean, I think of like Mozart when you when you when you're playing an instrumental work by Mozart, and then suddenly one of his opera characters is like 
just appears and you're like, this is totally a Carabino moment or whatever. And, um, and just that connection between these certain types of personalities and the way they express themselves in musical, um, uh, motives, uh, that's real, you know, that's it. That, and, and if you feel it, then we're going to, we're going to feel it. Um, Another great point for all you musicians uh, tuning in right now. So, okay, let's get back to some more music. I just love getting to know you two, though. I mean, I could talk to you guys all night about music and and everything. Um, I love this stuff. So, okay, Esme, you've got some Gershwin for us. What are we going to hear? This is It Ain't Necessarily So by Gershwin, arranged by Heifetz. Love this song. Okay. Next, I have one of my quarantine pieces, which was uh, the uh, Prokofiev Sonata, Prokofiev Flute Sonata. I'm playing the first movement, um, and I this was the first piece that I knew I wanted to play after I was done with college auditions. I was like, this is the one, um, but then everything got shut down, um, and so I learned the whole thing over quarantine, but it was, it was one of those pieces that I was really able to come to to like escape you know, from the sort of reality of everything.
Beautiful. Just beautiful. Love that piece. Love to hear that lyrical side of Prokofiev just coming through so beautifully on the flute. Of course, I've played it with violin too, but we don't need to get into that. Yeah, I, I, don't start beef. Yeah. It was written for us first. That's right. Why Violinists have enough. They have enough. Why do they have to go stealing it? Um, I agree. Yeah. No, just beautiful. Thank you so much for that performance. For those of you just tuning in, that was Nadira Navruzov, and uh, she was just featured on our program this past weekend. We've also been hearing from Esme Arias Kim, um, also on the same show. And if you're enjoying this programming and you'd like to consider uh, making a gift to From the Top, we certainly would appreciate that. We are an independent nonprofit organization, and uh, the generosity of folks like yourselves makes it possible for us to keep doing what we do and and... Uh, amplifying the voices of these young artists and and bringing their music to audiences all around the country. So we really appreciate your generosity. And there's a, a link somewhere down there in the comments section um, that's, that should be popping up right about now, and that'll tell you how to do it. Or you can just go to fromthetop.org. Um, so before we close out the evening with a final performance from each of you, I have a surprise, which is a game, because I like games. And um, those of you at home, we want you to play along at home because that's really important um, to make sure that you all are participating. And this is a really serious quiz. And um, Nadir, I know you're rusty because, you know, you're on your gap year. You haven't been in school for a while. So I hope you're ready. No, no, no. It's all good. Um, this is a really important quiz, and we're going to be doing uh, a game every every time we have one of these things, and um, with these these live premiere uh, concert events, and and over the course of the season, all of our from the top uh, musicians are going to be competing uh, for a very special prize. So, okay, here's the way this game works: I say a name, and you guys have to tell me is it the name of a type of pasta. Or is it the name of, of a composer? Okay? And this is real. This is very real. So what I want you to do, um, we're going to use this enhanced uh, Zoom technology where if you write down your answer on a piece of paper and just hand it right into the camera and I'll get it that way. Okay? So the very first one, you just write down, is it pasta or is it composer? All right? The first one is sorprese. Sorprese. And folks at home, please put your guesses into the chat. We want you to, to actively participate. Sorprese. Okay, hand it right on through the camera. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, here they are. Let's see if this... Now, Zoom has been selling us, you know... There. Let's see if, if it's just empty promises or if... No, it didn't, it didn't work, you guys. It didn't work. This is just, this is the culmination of so much frustration that I've had with Zoom. And they promised me that it would work and it didn't. So, okay, plan B. Um, just tell me, what do you think it is? Nadira, sorprese, pasta or composer? It has to be a pasta. There's no way that that's, I've never heard that name before. Okay, Esme, what do you think? I said composer, but now I'm thinking maybe it's not. And no, don't, no, don't, don't change your answer. I'll be okay. confident. I'll be don't confident. let me influence you. Yeah, don't, okay. I think it's a don't, composer. Okay. Guys, it was pasta. Sorpresa is a pasta. It's a pasta. Okay, I got another one. Campagnoli. Campagnoli. Okay, um, Esme, what do you think? Okay, Nadira? I'm going to go with composer on this one because it sounds like a pasta for sure, but like it could be a name. <sighs> She's still sharp, folks. It's a composer. Campagnoli. How are you so good at this game? Esme, don't, don't take soul. it too hard. Don't, she's got a few years on you. She's learned all about the pastas. Um, okay, next one. Testaroli. Testaroli. And make sure, hey, everyone watching at home, make sure you're putting your guesses in here too. Testaroli. Nadira? Ooh, this one's rough. Testaroli. Um, I'm going to go, I'm going to go pasta on this one. Okay, Esme? I would agree. I think it's a You're pasta. both right about that. That is a pasta. 
That is a pasta. All right, I got one more for you, okay? Bertocini. Bertocini. Follow your heart. Esme? I think it's a composer. Okay, Nadira? See, like, I know that, like, fettuccine is a... Like, I know that... You're, oh, so, you're so smart. So I'm going to say pasta. It was a composer. It was a trick question. Bertocini. I, I, you, I was really hoping someone would fall for that. Um, because... Yeah, it sounds like fettuccine. Okay, fine. We got we got to do one more. Um, I've I've lost count, but someone more important than me is keeping score. Um, the, the big dogs are keeping score. Okay, last one. I promise. Mercadente. Mercadente. Nadira. Mercadente. Like al dente is also like a pasta thing. Oh man. So pasta. Don't just go with your gut. Okay, pasta. What do you say, Esme? Mercadente. Torn, so I'm trying to see like which ones have been pasta and composer and like the order and trying to figure it out There's, that way. I'm I'm not smart enough to try to come up with this anything like that. I'm gonna say pasta. That one was a composer. Oh no. All right, so for all of you playing along at home. I, I hope you enjoyed that brand new segment. Um, I hope you two enjoyed it. You did good. I I lost track. Did you guys keep track of what your score was? I, I actually lost track. I think Nadira maybe won by like one, but that was a close call. Um, some someone is keeping track, and now you're in the big bad pool of contestants, and we'll just have to wait until the end of the season to find out who our winner is with the great big prize. Okay. Um, thanks everyone for joining us this evening and, um, for participating in that game. I hope you've, you've enjoyed yourselves. A special thanks to our partner organizations tonight, the Sphinx organization and the Kaufman Music Center here in New York. Uh, it's been so much fun to have both of you, Nadira and Esme, uh, with us. Great getting to know you, great getting to hear your musicianship and see your, your artistry. Um, so yeah, what are we going to hear to take us out of the program? You each have one more piece, right? Um, I'm going to be playing the first movement of the Bach Partita uh, for solo flute in A minor. Yeah. And Esme? I'll be playing the Isaiah Sonata Number no. 3 titled The Ballad. Beautiful. All right, you guys, take it away.
Esme, Arias, Kim, Nadira, and Avruzov, give it up for these two amazing musicians. Thank you so much for being with us, you two. Thank you. And thank, thank you, you so to much. all of you for joining us. I'm Peter Dugan. Have a great night.